statement because he is alive. Yes. If you look at your bulletins, that's the title of my message. Three times for confirmation to let us know Amen. that he is alive. Amen. 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 So that he is alive. Amen. Right. But I want to share a couple of things that the Lord had put in my heart to share with all of you this morning before I get into the meat of the message. And I want to lay down a foundation for this teaching here this morning. And I know from time to time a lot of churches are celebrating today because this is a good day. This is an awesome day. Mm -hmm. This is a day that we remind ourselves of what God did for us because of the love that he had for us. He was willing to give up Amen. his only begotten son. And sometimes people, we're going to have to give up something too. Amen. It's not only about God giving it up. It's about us giving it up. Amen. 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 Maybe you need to give up some of your attitudes and your conducts and your ways and everything that we do that is not pleasing to God. Amen. 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 But I want to share a couple of things. And I was really putting this message together. The Lord was really speaking to me day after day for the last couple of weeks. And, then it's, and it's so neat to know and understand that from Genesis to Revelation, God speaks to us about the coming Messiah the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. And I want to share these things. And, and these things are so important for us to know and understand. What does it really mean when we think about the resurrection? It means plain and simple people. It means to be raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, I hope you guys picked that up. <laughs> Amen. But see, the, the resurrection, it was taught. It was taught in the Old Testament. It was a foundation that was laid down by the prophets. And in the book of Psalms, it was taught. And it was foretold in many ways, amen? It was taught in the Old Testament, yet it was denied by the Sadducees. No, it was denied by them. But yet, it was affirmed by Christ. When he said and he came and he taught his disciples, day after day after day, he taught them of what was about to happen. Amen. And it was illustrated by Lazarus. I want to share a couple of scriptures concerning that because it is so important for us to know and understand, people, what does it really mean and what happened even to Lazarus. Because Lazarus, too, was raised from the dead. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say the whole scripture the whole scriptures, but I'm going to pick up a few verses here. In the book of John, chapter 11, verse 21, he says, Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Do you believe that? Then Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, look, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, don't you, aren't you grateful that Jesus always has an answer for every question that rises up in life? And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Now he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That's a question for all of us people. Amen. And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into this world. You know, when I was reading that verse right there, the Lord really put me on pause, and I started thinking about this. Where is our faith when it comes to death? No, where is our faith as Christians when it comes to death. Amen. And I started thinking about because there are people that will come into your pathway and God will lead them into your pathway in order for them to start asking questions about your faith. Amen. But this is what this is what the Lord showed me in verse 25. Jesus said to her, look, I am the resurrection and the life. Now he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. That's where our, our faith should be, people. When people come to question you about death, how do you know you're going to heaven? How do you know if you're not going to hell? How do you know about all this, this, and that? And this is the answer as Christians 
we should memorize that verse right there to let them know where your faith is and where eternal life is. Amen. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Now he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Woo, amen. There is life after death, people. And that verse right there is confirmation to every believer to tell the unbeliever right. of where we're going to wind up when we die. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Yes. Then that's the verse that has to be embedded, grounded, and rooted in your heart. So when you begin to share Christ, you're going to be able to let them know, doesn't matter what you've done yesterday. Amen. God will forgive you, and this is where you're going because this is what Jesus said. Amen. It's not that we're saying this. We're quoting the same verses that Jesus quoted 2,000 years ago. And the word doesn't change, people. Amen. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. The thing is, is that we're changing. Yes, yes. From time to time, we doubt and we fear. The anxiety yes. comes on. Yes. We yes. go yes. and we bury our loved ones. Sometimes, man, you get people crying over that coffin, and they keep crying and grieving and sorrow for days and weeks and months and even years yes. because they don't know this verse. Mm -hmm. They don't know this verse that there is life after death to the believer. Amen. Amen. But this is where your faith has to be at. Amen? Amen. Look, I don't have anything against people going to cemeteries year after year after year. They go out there and they have a picnic. Why didn't you go on a picnic when they were alive? Amen. Why didn't you take them some flowers where they could smell them and see them mm -hmm. and bring a little bit of pleasure into their lives? That's true. Amen? Amen. And a lot of people do that because they still have certain regrets. And we shouldn't have no regrets, people, when, we're, right. when we as Christians know the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? This is why Jesus even said this. Look, let the dead bury the dead, but yeah. you come follow me. Amen. Yeah. He told us all this. And, you, and these are the things, people, that we need to grab a hold of. We need to grab a hold of his word and let go of all our ways and the things that we've been taught for years we've been taught. I, look, I have nothing against the Catholic Church. I have a lot of Catholic family members that are still there. Amen? But I thank God. You know what? I, I never learned all this. They never explained it to me. And they never allowed us to bring in our Bibles into the church. Amen? If the priest said it, then we believed it. So on Resurrection Sunday, all we did was go out there and party and drink and get loaded. And that was the thing. But now, my God, we've been resurrected to a new life that we don't have to go back there and open up and taste great and less feeling. It doesn't feel that good anymore, people. Nope, nope, because nope. we already know the truth. Amen? Right. I'm telling you, we're going in a different direction here on this Sunday morning. Because we need to be resurrected from our flesh, people. We can't go back to our flesh no more. Nope. We can't go back. It's not about our flesh nope. anymore. It's about the Spirit of God yes. that is in us. Amen. And when that Spirit of God is still in us, people, we're going to have to learn how to let go of some things That's and right. give it up. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. And, this is what, and this is why Jesus came, and this was an illustration that God had to give us. Amen? Look, and it was even explained, it was explained away from false teachers. False teachers were coming in and, and bringing all this deception into the body of Christ even back in those days. How dare you think this man came back to life? Are you sure that the Roman soldiers just didn't take him out in the middle of the night? Mm. Amen? But then again, it was questioned by many. How can he be? How can he be who he say he is? Yeah. How can he be the son of God? How can he be resurrected? Wasn't he just a carpenter's son? Mm. Wasn't he a woodworker? Huh? Didn't he just live like we all do? Earn a living? But yet through all this, my God, oh my God, God had a bigger and better plan. But too many people were questioning who Jesus Christ was. Mm. And even nowadays, people are still questioning the resurrection. Amen? What would you do if someone came out of the grave that you buried 10 years ago? 
and came knocking at your door. Um, what would you do? You'd be rejoicing, you'd be partying, you'd be running down Euclid Avenue and Holt Avenue. Amen. Who cares what people would say about you? Amen. And the Word of God says that it was proclaimed even by Paul through the epistles. Paul had more to say about the resurrection, people, and I'm going to be getting into that chapter here pretty soon. But I tell you what, Paul had to learn the hard way. Yep. Look, we don't have to learn the hard way anymore. We got enough faith to believe that this resurrection took place, people. Amen? Then it was accomplished by what? By the power of God. Nobody could have resurrected Christ but God. Amen? And maybe some of us need a little bit of resurrection. Maybe we need to bury some things and leave them buried. Amen? I'll leave that up to you guys. Amen? And the resurrection was incorruptible. Amen? And it was glorious. Can you imagine being there on that glorious day when you see the Lord coming back and you face Him face to face and you know that it's God? Huh? Remember when the apostles or the disciples were up in the upper room waiting and waiting and waiting and all of a sudden, guess who walks in? Doubting Thomas. Yeah. And Thomas.